Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're gonna use some scrap wood to organize the shop. It's been a while since I've been building a bunch of things in this shop. It's been a busy year, but we're back and we're gonna get it organized. First step in that was building this awesome storage rack last week. And so I've got all of my scrap materials stored right here, but we also have a nice big clean slate that we can use for organizing clamps and a bunch of other stuff. So the first thing we need to do is go over and talk about the problem on the other side of the shop. This is one problem, but we're gonna deal with that later. The problem that I actually wanna fix right now is not truly a problem, but this awesome A-frame cart that I made a long time ago is completely covered with clamps on the back. It works great for that purpose, but I'm running out of space. So I wanna move some of these clamps over to that wall and that will free up the backside of this cart to use for other things. So in this video, we're actually gonna make a bunch of different things. They're all gonna be quick, they're all gonna be easy, and they're gonna be made out of scrap. We're gonna make a bunch of different ways to store clamps on different surfaces. And we've got some other things we gotta figure out about storing dowels and PVC pipes and things like that. But first, let's talk about the clamps. To the whiteboard. I sketched out a couple of really simple ways to store clamps. These are things that have been done a million times. In fact, I've done a lot of these in videos before, but I wanna give you a reference as to what we're gonna work on. So the first thing we're gonna do is this right here, and that's for storing parallel clamps. We're gonna make it really easy out of some terrible scrap wood. This is a parallel clamp, and the way I'm planning on storing this is just making a little thing that they can slide into and hang on like that. There's a bunch of different ways you could do it, but this is a very simple way. We're gonna use this terrible scrap wood, and I said it's terrible because this is wood that I purchased for another project, and I really dislike it. I was gonna throw it away, but I decided to use it for this project because it doesn't really matter what it looks like. So basically what we're gonna do here is measure down an inch on opposite corners and draw a line in between and then cut along that line. Check this out. Now we've got two pieces that are identical and all we have to do is cut along that line. It doesn't matter what you use to cut that with because it's gonna be the bottom edge. It doesn't even have to be straight, but I'm gonna use the bandsaw. I mentioned before that I did not like this wood and I'm gonna tell you why. Look at that. Just from a really nice cut on a table saw, you end up with this terrible fraying on the ends of it. This type of wood is called aspen and I do not recommend it, but I have a lot of it, so that's what I'm gonna use. Basically, I cut these pieces because these are gonna act as the backer. So we're gonna take both of these and drive in screws from the backside into those pieces and make little hangers. Super simple. This is ready to go on the wall. I left a little bit of area on the side so we can just drive in a couple screws to fix it to the wall. Obviously, if you wanted, you could have one long backboard with a bunch of these sticking off of it, but I wanted to make all of these individual so that I could kind of move them around on the wall. Oh, the absolute worst. I hate this stuff so much. All right, back to the whiteboard. Okay, those are done. Next up, we're gonna move to this one, which is just a single board with notches cut in it. And those notches are the thickness of this part of this clamp. So all of these can slide on. I've got a whole bunch of these, like 40 of different sizes. So we're actually gonna do two separate pieces with 20 slots each. I've got two of these and I'm gonna use them to measure out the distance. Basically, I wanna have a little gap here so if I measure the thickness of this bar right here, it's about a quarter of an inch, and I wanna put about an inch in between them. So I think I'm gonna take the board, and go to the table saw, and use a dado blade to cut the slots for these, and then use a miter sled just to push it through, move it over an inch and push it through. Just kinda of make it up, it doesn't have to be exact. I don't know, it's just... 
This video is sponsored by Simply Safe. We are big fans of Simply Safe around here. We've got a system here at the office, and all of us have them at home. Basically, you just go to simplysafe.com and you pick out all the items that you need for your location, maybe indoor and outdoor cameras, you got glass break sensors, door sensors, water sensors, and a bunch of other things. And you pick out all the things that you need and they ship them to you in a box. Once you've got that box, it only takes you about 30 minutes to set up the entire system using the app and the keypad. And after that, you wanna make sure to sign up for interactive monitoring. It's only about a dollar a day. And the cool thing about it is that if any of your sensors are tripped while the system is armed, they will call you and the authorities to make sure everything is okay. In fact, recently, Josh was messing around with the fog machine here at the office and it accidentally set off a smoke alarm and I got a phone call and I was in a totally different place. It's a very, very cool thing, gives you a lot of peace of mind and you should definitely go check it out. So be sure to go to simplysafe.com slash ILTMS. That's gonna give you 20% off your entire system and when you sign up for interactive monitoring, you're gonna get a month for free. It's a great system. We vouch for it here at I Like To Make Stuff. Be sure to go check them out. And big thanks to Simply Safe for sponsoring this video. I didn't really think about the placement of this, and so this single unit is just too wide. I don't have a good spot for it. And so I think what I can do is just cut right down the middle uh, and put a short stack there, another one right below it for the short clamps, and then do a couple more all the way down for the longer ones. I have a lot more of the short ones than I have of the long ones. It'll be fine. I hate this stuff. All right, that was easy. Back to the whiteboard. Okay, that's done, now we have two more. One is just like the simplest possible thing that you could make. It's literally a two by four stuck to a piece of wood. Now this seems dumb, but it's useful. Let me show you this. Like I said, this is the simplest possible thing that I could come up with to attach clamps to. And the cool thing about this is you can use it for any of these type of clamps. They will hang on here, but eventually, if they're kind of weighted in one direction, they'll probably fall off. The advantage of using something like this is if you have a clamp that has kind of a closed top to it. So with this, you can slide these on. They're not gonna fall off even if they rock around. And this gives you a lot of different opportunities to hold different types of clamps in the same space. So just wanted to give you another really simple option in addition to all the other ones. Okay, we got one more we wanna do for this wall, so back to the whiteboard. Okay, that's that one. Now the next one is almost as easy, and it's actually really similar. We're gonna take a flat board to put it on the wall and then a really thin board sticking out of it for these. These spring clamps are incredibly useful and I've got a ton of them. I found that the easiest way to store these is actually just to clamp them onto something. And if you have a really thin surface, you can clamp a whole bunch of them and just stack them up. So basically we're gonna take a piece of plywood cut a little slot in it, and then just put in a fin that these can clamp onto. I cut down a strip of eighth inch MDF. You could use anything, obviously, but the reason I picked eighth inch is because it's just about the same as this blade kerf, so I can easily cut a dado without swapping out the blade. And so basically I'm gonna cut a little dado down here to fit the piece of wood and just glue it in. I just kind of eyeballed it. It's a little bit loose, but glue will fill that up just fine. That glue is gonna take a little bit to dry and I'm impatient right now. So we're gonna use some CA glue and just fill up the outside of both of these and then just spray on some activator and that will hold it in place so I can start using it. And then that wood glue will eventually dry and make it nice and strong.
All right, that's done. Now for something totally different. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is actually take care of all of the storage that I currently have in a big container here. Just does not work. The biggest group of things is these dowels. So I've got dowels in all different lengths. I've got some that are wood, metal, all of these different things that are cylindrical. And so I wanna keep all of those in something. I've also got a whole bunch of extra PVC that I need to use. So we're gonna use the PVC to store those and smaller pieces of PVC. Let me show you some of the PVC that I'm talking about because it's actually kind of cool. This is Schedule 40 PVC, and you can tell by the wall thickness that's what the Schedule 40 is. There's also some stuff that's just for sewage, just for drainage, and it's way thinner. Now, the cool thing about this is that it's a lot cheaper. So if you're not actually doing plumbing with it, if you just need the shape of it, this is a much better way to go. And if you go to get this at the store, it's not with the Schedule 40. It's not in the plumbing aisle, it's in the outdoor kind of drainage aisle, so be sure to look for it there. But I've got a lot of this stuff that we used originally for dust collection, so I've got a bunch of offcuts, and this stuff will be great for storing all these other pieces. All right, so I've got these kind of stacked up. They're way too tall, so I need to cut them down. But I wanna make sure that I have some that are tall enough to hold four feet and above, and then maybe like three and two. And so I've got a section here. I'm gonna cut off that back row at that height. Then I'm gonna cut off this middle row at this height, and then the bottom row at this height. I'm gonna do that on the miter saw. It's very easy to cut this stuff. You just have to make sure that it's not gonna spin as you cut it. So you have to be sure to hold it really tightly. Okay, so these need to be stuck together and then I'm just gonna put them on top of a piece of plywood with some wheels under it so I can roll this around. And honestly, I think the simplest and fastest way to put all these together is hot glue. Now to hot glue these surfaces together, I have to make sure that they're clean because right now they are super dusty and that hot glue is gonna stick to the dust instead of to the pipe. So I'm gonna wipe all these down real quick and then just lay them on a table flat and hot glue them together with the ends meeting up. And I'll do that in the different sections set them on their side and glue them all up into one big block. All right, I've got all these things glued together and a little stand for them, and some casters. I measured this panel, basically these dimensions plus uh, an inch and a half. So I've got three quarters inch on each side. So I cut down some other pieces that we can use as kind of bumpers. This will help hold this in place, but also you know, guide it to be centered on this panel. Now I'm gonna mark the outside edge of some of these pipes so I can lift it out, put in some hot glue on these lines and then set it back in place so it'll have hot glue underneath all of the different pieces. All right, let's load this thing up with all of my pieces and be finished. That thing's awesome and was super easy to make out of scrap that I already had. So we've got all of that storage, all of the clamp storage, and we still have a whole section over there where we can add battery chargers and French cleat and a bunch of other stuff. But that's gonna wrap it up for this video and I hope this gave you some ideas for ways to organize your shop on the cheap. And if you have some more ideas, let us know down in the comments. We've got tons of other types of projects that you may wanna check out. And if you're not subscribed, be sure to do that as well. That's it for this one, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Today we're going to use some scrap wood to organize the shop. <laughs> and that will free up this side. <clears throat> Puberty. <laughs> you can do that on the, uh, what's that called? I'm going to do that on the miter saw. I've got a lot of this that we used for, what's the word? Dust collector. Yeah.
There we go. The most ridiculous pipe organ ever.